So today I want to talk a little bit about first flush diverters. It's an element that a lot of rainwater harvesting videos talk about using and truth is they don't really do what they're intended to do or they're kind of a waste of money. And so today I want to show you our first flush diverter and talk a little bit about why you probably don't need it on your rainwater harvesting system um, and uh, potentially save you the $70 that it costs to put it in. So if you've been watching my channel, you know that Michelle and I, my wife, recently wrote this book, Essential Rainwater Harvesting. And in it, uh, we talk about all the different components of a rainwater harvesting system, what makes them function, why you need them, why you don't need them, how to optimize the size of your tank using a very simple algorithm that we developed, um, and how to build your own rainwater harvesting tool so that if you're going to be designing more than just one system, or even if you're just designing one system that you can optimize that. The book itself was kind of hard to write because as engineers we have to be very careful about um, making sure that people are meeting code and um, doing things in a safe manner and so when we went to write this book at the time it wasn't really legal to harvest rainwater and use it for potable indoor uses. Now recently the code has changed and there's a uh, combined CSA NSF codes, that's Canada and US code, that's actually going to permit the use of rainwater for all uses if it's properly harvested. Now because it's a fairly new code, it hasn't really been adopted yet and so um, municipalities have to kind of individually adopt it. And so until then, um, you're kind of stuck in limbo and so our, the purpose for writing this book was to basically help people to understand best practices based on some really big case studies out of Australia as well as all the research um, so that if they do go and build a rainwater harvesting system, that the system itself is going to harvest high quality rainwater. It's then up to you to figure out how you're gonna go about meeting code based on how your local municipality, state or province is going to enact um, that particular code. So one of the things that we looked at in order to try and uh, build a book that was as universal as possible was to look at those best practices and the research that supports those best practices. And one of the components that a lot of rainwater harvesting advocates talk about is the use of first flush diverters. And it turns out that these diverters just really don't add that much uh, benefit to the rainwater harvesting system. And I'm gonna leave a link to the research below that you can download um, in the show notes below. So if you wanna follow up with this and read the papers yourself, you'll be able to do that. Um, we also reference all of that research in this book as well. And so if you want to see kind of the details behind it and how we go about creating those best practices, I highly recommend checking out that book. So in principle, you know, a, a first flush diverter makes a ton of sense because basically what it's doing is it's harvesting the first flush off of the roof. But in reality, um, there's kind of a couple things that kind of break down as a result of the first flush diverter. Now just before I go over there, you'll notice that everything's kind of brown here. Um, we're just at the very early stages of spring and so things are just starting to leaf out. You can kind of see the Saskatoons right here and they're loving this rain right now. Um, and so what happens with first flush diverters, as I was mentioning, is it takes the first flush off of the roof. And it's this guy right here that is actually picking up that rain, that first flush. Now the thing is, is that these need to be maintained on a regular basis, which I find a lot of people don't actually do. And so if you don't do that, they end up getting clogged up. And as a result of that, they, um, they can go septic. And so they can end up being a detrimental or having a detrimental effect on your rainwater harvesting system. And so as a rule of thumb, as a designer, I know that I'm designing to the lowest common denominator, which means that people might not be doing their maintenance. The second thing is that the primary um, treatment mechanisms that seem to have a really big effect on rainwater harvesting systems actually starts up at the roof with UV treatment. So the sunlight actually sterilizes the roof surface, proper design and sloping of gutters. And then this guy right here, which is the rain head, which is one of the most important components of a rainwater harvesting system. And so the rain head picks up that initial kind of organic debris, which you can see it's doing a really great job of right here, preventing it from getting into the tank. Um, and then ideally, in an ideal world, we'd skip this first flush diverter and go straight into the tank itself. Um, at which point any debris that's left in that water is going to settle out in the sludge layer, 
or get picked up in the biofilm layer itself. Um, and so the main reason why you don't want to use one of these suckers is that there's no real good evidence indicating that this improves high quality water coming off the back end of a rainwater tank. So if there's nothing to prove that it's actually improving the water, then you're wasting money and you're wasting water. And in our climate where water is pretty scarce, every liter counts. And so we don't want to lose any of that water, um, which ironically I'm doing right now. I've got to figure out why this is not going all the way down into the tank, which is pretty ironic considering we're supposed to be <laughs> rainwater experts, but I'll figure, figure that out after the video. Um, it's really important, speaking of which, that when you have rain systems, that you're checking them on a regular basis to prevent this very thing from happening, which is wonderful that I'm catching it right at the very beginning of spring so that we make sure we've got a really effective rain system all year long. Now the primary treatment mechanisms of the tank I just mentioned are essentially the sludge layer and the biofilm layer. The biofilm layer forms on the inside of the tank and has been shown, in addition to the sludge layer, to bioaccumulate all the toxins that you don't want in that water. One study that we read talked about how the sludge layer had up to 300,000 times the concentration of lead as compared to the center center water column in the actual tank itself, which is just nothing short of unbelievable because the biofilms essentially are acting as a bioremediation mechanism to clean the water up. So when you're designing your rainwater harvesting system, make sure you've got a good clean roof surface, well sloped eaves troughs, a rain head which you can buy off of Amazon or your local rainwater harvesting store. A good large tank. This tank actually is way too small. I'd recommend going larger than this. Um, and you're going to want to optimize that based upon um, supply and demand metrics which you can use our design tool to help you to figure out which again will be a link to that in the show notes. Um, and if you do all of that then you'll meet your objective of collecting and storing high quality rainwater which can be used in your garden and uh, with a few additional steps you can actually bring it into your house if your local municipality will allow that. Eventually this is the way that the world is going to go. Water is the new oil. We know that as civilization grows and we continue to use more water in all sorts of uh, commercial, residential and industrial uses that water is becoming more scarce and so we're not going to be able to avoid or ignore uh, rainwater for much longer. So guys, if you want to get into rainwater harvesting and you want to learn these best practices, check out the show notes below for a link to our book. I've also put all the research, as I mentioned, down there, and we'll put a link to um, our design tool, which you can download if you don't want to get the book, but you just want to start optimizing your own rainwater harvesting system. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you in the next video, and I'll be doing lots more of videos on rainwater harvesting throughout the summer and teaching you everything you need to know about sizing tanks, sizing gutters, sizing roofs, and making sure that you're following those best practices. Talk to you soon.